So thank you for watching Faith Story and, and thank you for taking your faith seriously. So this is probably a message that is closest to the heart of Faith Story. And it's one that, that I really hope as I'm presenting it, that it comes across like that. Because to have a breakthrough is one of the most beautiful things that we could ever have in life. And life is filled with breakthroughs. Sometimes we will be in a space within our faith journey and maybe just a space within life where everything is okay. So we don't have anything to complain about and the good days, bad days, but, but it's all right. It's maybe not exactly where we want it to be, but it could be worse. And we also know that there are some things like on the fringe that we're not really dealing with, but we're not going to deal with it now. Like we'll deal with those things later and we can ignore them a little bit and suppress them and and that maybe sums up where you might be in life at the moment. And deep within your heart, you have this yearning of like, but I want to know God closely. I want to be able to walk with him closely and to trust him more than anything else. And that is really what this message is about. It's about understanding what that breakthrough looks like. To walk with the Lord really, really closely. So our spiritual journey follows a pathway and that pathway, generally speaking, starts when we come to know who God is through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the first part is to get to know him. And that's when we realize that he really knows us. That's the beginning of the new life in Christ. It's a breakthrough, a really special time. And then as we continue on that journey, we, we start growing in our faith. And it's going to come at a time where you feel, okay, so I know who God is, but I need to get to know him more. And I remember distinctly in my life, I remember that moment of, of wanting to read the scriptures and wanting to get to know God. And then all these little mini breakthroughs happen. You discover his character and you, you find a new promise that he has given that you didn't know. And it's a beautiful, beautiful time of growth. And then the next breakthrough that takes place on this spiritual journey is when we, we start serving. You share what you have known. And it could come in a lot of different ways. Sometimes it is actually serving in a church or in a ministry or, or maybe it's just sharing your faith with someone for the first time. And as you share your faith with them, you realize, wow, I have been on a journey and it could progress so that ultimately after years you are serving in a role within your church or you have a position and that is life. Or maybe you've just been attending church for a really long time or you've walked with the Lord for a long time. But it's become a little bit mundane. It's like I can tick all the boxes and I've, I've been through these things and I know that there's more. And why I say that this sits at the heart of Faith Story is because Faith Story is not a church. And church plays a beautiful role, especially in those first three, of being able to help us all with our journey and, and getting to know who the Lord is. But there is a truth that is very important. And that is that God doesn't want our faith to be a faith and a relationship that is through a church. He doesn't want our faith to be one that is through another person, whether that is family or friends or a pastor. God doesn't want us to have almost like a second-hand faith. He wants to know you, and he wants to know you so personally. He wants to know you closely. And that's the next part of that spiritual journey. It's the next part of the maturing, and it's a very difficult part because the first part, it's easy to understand, and eventually we get we, we know it and it's comfortable. It fits in our little boxes of, of everything that we can do. And God says, okay, and now? And the way that this normally happens is we have to get to this crisis moment. You have to have this wall that comes into your life. It is something that stops you in your tracks. It's something that just prevents you from being able to move forward. And then you have one of two options. I either have to break through this 
I have to confront it and I have to go into this really difficult space that is so uncomfortable and uneasy. Or I can just go back to what I've known. And in that moment of decision, that's the choice. The choice is there is growth beyond this wall. If I break through this as difficult, as uncomfortable, as uneasy as what it might be, there is growth and closeness with God on the other side like I've never known before. But I also understand that that is really difficult and that there is a lot of doubt, that there's a lot of uncertainty when you are faced with that because there aren't guarantees and that's what faith requires and that's what God is looking for. He wants us to trust him like never before. And he wants us to trust him with absolutely everything that we have. And we have a glimpse of this because there are, there are biblical characters that had to face their walls. And everybody wall, everybody's wall looks different. So for in, in your life, it could be heartache, betrayal. It could be relationship breakdown. It could be a crisis within your health. It could be a financial crisis, job loss. It could be an identity crisis that you have. It could be a change in your circumstances, death of a really close friend. I don't know what your wall looks like. It's just one of those massive moments in life. And then there's the choice. And the choice is, do I push through this or do I just go back to what I've known? And I want to read from Philippians chapter 3. And this is Paul the Apostle and he faced his wall. He had a moment in his life where he thought he had everything in his box. Like he could understand life and he was going around. This was when he was still called Saul. He was like top of his class from a religious perspective. He had authority and power and, and he was going around doing what he believed God wanted him to be and to do. And that was to be the person who was arresting and persecuting Christians. And then he came face to face with the risen savior on the road to Damascus. And he was blinded. And the Lord spoke to him and he said, Saul, what are you doing? Why are you fighting against me? And in that moment, Saul, who then became Paul, had a choice. He could either be like, oh, what is this? And I'm just going to carry on doing what I used to. Or in his vulnerability and humility and weakness, he could say, Lord, I'm going to seek you in this. I'm going to trust you in this darkness and in this unknown. And because he pushed through that, the Lord used him in the most incredible way. And he wrote the majority of the New Testament. And this is one of his letters that he wrote. And in this letter, it's almost like we get a glimpse. It's like reading the journal entry of somebody who's on the other side of the wall. And this is what he says from verse 7. He says, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. And when you read, I'm going to encourage you to read that whole passage from chapter 3. You'll see all the things that he used to think were gain, the things that had value to him. And he says, I count them all as loss. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And I count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. When you get to this moment and you have to make the choice, am I going to push through this? Am I going to allow this difficult moment in my life to do the work that God wants it to do? Am I going to see what it's like to trust fully. This is why, this is the motive that I may know him and that I may know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. 
It is a willingness to want to know God so closely and so intimately that there is nothing that compares to that. That there is a moment when you get to say, there is nothing else that I want except to be able to hold on to Christ. And in that moment, when that becomes the most important thing to you, when you can let go of everything else, when you have the courage to be able to push through, that's when you start taking responsibility for your faith. And you realize this is nobody else's responsibility. It's not the church's responsibility. It's not the pastor's responsibility. It's not my family, my friend. It's not my mentor. It's not that Christian person that's been in my life. It's not the pastor on TV or on YouTube or anywhere else. This is between me and the Lord. And it doesn't get more personal than that. And I think that's why God uses our personal circumstances. Because it has to be that personal. It's not anybody else's story. It's yours. And when you break through that wall, well, that's when you stop ignoring the parts in your life that you've been allowing yourself to get away with. Because when you break through that wall and you are walking so closely with the Lord, well, then he knows about those things and he shows them up. And you don't have a choice but to say, okay, Lord, you're the closest to me now. Now we're going to work through this. You stop trying to please people because you realize there's no value in that compared to pleasing God. That's when you stop trying to control the things that so obviously are not in your control. And you stop prioritizing other things above the Lord. And that's when you start seeking him in everything. That's when you start wanting to please him above everything else. That's when you start trusting him in ways that you've never trusted him before. And the strange thing is, even though on the other side of the wall, it doesn't look so perfect, like it doesn't flow as as easily and smoothly, like I get to know him and then I grow and then I serve and then I can see the line. On the other side of the wall, it's I feel close one day and the next day I'm like, what's happening? Why do I feel like this? And then to realize that God is just as close to me when I feel like this, as to when I feel great, that he's working in me in in different ways. And so it's not a straight line anymore. Now it's up and it's down. It all looks like a crow's nest. But within that, it's, it's so close with the Lord. And I can see that through all of those things, through all of the big moments in life, then I realize, okay, I don't need to be afraid of the walls that are coming. Yes, they're going to be difficult, but I know what it's going to do. And then my faith journey takes on a whole new perspective. Because now it's it's not about ticking boxes and it's not about making progress on a linear way. Now it is just about I'm trusting the Lord with absolutely everything, no matter what. That I count all things loss for the sake of knowing Christ. That's when I can see that seeking God, well, that's breakthrough. That's where I can see that wanting to be close to Him, well, that's breakthrough. And when I can count all things as loss for the sake of knowing Him, well, that is breakthrough. And that is what God is calling you to. He wants you to be close to him. And so I want to encourage you. Wherever you might be on your faith journey, just get to that next breakthrough. If that means getting to know Christ, well, then that's the most beautiful breakthrough. If that means getting to grow in him, well, then grow and be excited about what you're learning. And if that means that you get to serve or to share, then just enjoy the exhilaration of those moments. And when the wall comes, because it's going to come, because life always dishes up walls, when it comes, I can't say be ready, because 
I don't think we'll, we're ever ready for it. But just be encouraged. Because see the opportunity that on the other side of that wall is the greatest closeness and the greatest journey that you could ever have with Christ. And embrace it with courage and with faith, knowing that God is good and that he will take you through that. And even though it might be chaotic on the outside, God will give you his peace on the inside. And you will know that you are being used by him. And you get to participate in this incredible faith story that God is writing with your life.